The hot new trend in music streaming is lossless audio and high-res audio. Apple just announced it's upgrading 75 million songs on its Apple Music service to lossless, and Amazon dropped the price of its lossless service to compete on the same day. But what is lossless audio, and why should anybody care? In a nutshell, lossless audio is meant to sound better than an MP3 or AAC file when you stream it from the web. When Apple announced the original iPod 20 years ago, it did so under the tagline, a thousand songs in your pocket. The only way it could fit a thousand songs in a pocket was by making those songs take up as little space as possible on a hard drive. File sizes for an individual song needed to be about three or four megabytes back then compared to the 30 or 40 megabytes that they'd be on a CD. To compress them so much, you have to use a piece of software which analyzes the content of a music file and determines which bits a human ear probably can't hear, or probably won't notice not hearing. This is usually the very high frequencies, the very low frequencies, or sometimes two sounds that occur at the same moment that sound almost indistinguishable from each other. They can all go. An extreme example of lossy compression can be heard anytime you're put on hold during a customer service phone call. If you've ever wondered why the background music during such moments sound like absolute hot garbage, it's because of extreme loss during compression, amongst other hardware factors, like a phone not being a pair of headphones. But for two decades, hard drive capacities and internet speeds have increased exponentially, yet streaming music services still compress their music like it mattered as much as it did 10 or 20 years ago. And most of the time, the average person in the street wouldn't have any idea between lossy and lossless compression, and probably far fewer of them even care. But that's because good compression can sound very good these days. Nonetheless, that's what's now changing. All those sounds and frequencies that the software thinks you probably can't hear, there's no reason to throw those away anymore. Unlike with an MP3, the software doing the audio compression isn't looking for bits of sound to lose from the original recording, simply a more efficient way of storing it all. That's why these new files are called lossless, but they are still compressed. And an easy way to visualize this is with a simple analogy. Let's say that I have a black cat and a white cat and another black cat and another white cat and for some reason another black cat. You could also just say, I've got five cats, three black, two white. Exactly the same amount of information, but one takes significantly fewer words to get across. That's an extremely simplified form of lossless information compression. Now the business reason behind offering this for music streaming is simply that it's pretty easy for them to do. Apple and rivals already have the files, they're just making higher quality versions of them available for access, and it's a way they can stay competitive in a market where everyone's basically selling access to the same catalogue of tens of millions of recordings. Whether you can hear the difference or not is another question, and as much dependent on good ears as good audio hardware. Fortunately, it just so happens Apple will sell you some good audio hardware, and so will Amazon. wonder if there's a connection there. In my opinion, as an audio snob, this is the really exciting bit. But in my producer's opinion, we're out of time and that'll have to wait until another episode. In the meantime though, for more content like this, keep following Quick Take wherever you get your content on social media. And for Quick Take in London, I'm Nate Langson. <laughs>